Mm, this seems like credits to me. Oh yeah, there's Luigi right there. There he is. Lead in the march. All right, credits has happened. So, I have finally conquered another game that has been on my tentative uh, favorite games of all time. And I gotta admit, there, ha there was some allure lost from nostalgia purposes um, when playing this game. Granted, I only played it in like two days. I uh, got seven hours today, seven hours yesterday. I didn't buy any fireworks. I didn't even know where to buy those. Um, but uh, I think this game is still on the list. It's probably farther down than I would have thought, though. Um, the combat is really nice. I think there's... Uh, first of all, this, this thoughts is going to have no structure to it because I didn't write down anything. <laughs> um, although I could, I could try to put some structure on it by, um, over here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. This is taking too long. Too long. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's. It's pretty, pretty, I'll say it's further down than I would have initially wanted it to be. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but um, I, I once had it really high, probably like top three, top four. Um, it's probably not top five for me. Granted, I have not created a top five list for me right now, but if I'm like, Thinking of what the list was once, and those other games that are there, it's pr it might not be top five. Um, but anyways, uh, the story is um, is actually better than I can give it credit for. You know, like these invaders uh, come into the Mushroom Kingdom and uh, shatter, I guess, the Star Road in the process and prevent, I guess, like wishes from being made. And so Mario goes on a journey to not only repair Star Road, but stop Smithy from, uh, you know, taking over his world, basically. And it's it's a lot. Considering the, the other stories for Mario, this one's actually pretty good in comparison. Uh, it's not very fleshed out or anything like that, but it's still pretty good in comparison to the other Mario games. Um, there's a lot of really cool gameplay and mechanics of this game that I really, really like. Um, first of all, it does not commit the famous cardinal sin of backup party members not getting full experience. I'm eternally grateful for that. Um, a, a, a lot of the reason for that is because I swapped to Peach. Um, not necessarily out of choice, but out of necessity, because enemies and bosses just started doing a ridiculous amount of damage, uh, in AoE fashion, and so I needed to, uh, address that somehow, and Peach was the best way to do that. Um, I really like the nuance of the battle system. It is extremely simplistic, uh, just like any other turn-based battle system but it adds another layer to it that just makes it a little bit more interesting and a little bit more engaging uh you know when you make an attack if you hit a button prompt well not necessarily a prompt but if you if you hit the correlated button at a proper time interval you will get a bonus to whatever action you took in the case of an attack you'll do more damage in the case of um, like a spell, you might do more damage, you might uh, trigger a secondary effect, you might heal for more. And that's really, really cool. Um, the only other game that I've seen do something similar to that, other than like Paper Mario or whatever, or uh, Mario and Luigi, you know, those, those handheld games, is uh, Legend of Dragoon, which, you know, has the addition system where, you know, you gotta execute combos by pressing the button prompt, at you know the exact time you need to to continue the combo 
Um, so I was really, really happy about that. There we go. <laughs> Controller turned off. Um, uh, so the combat was really nice. Um, and considering that this game came out, I think, in like 1996, this was the era of turn-based combats. And back then, you didn't really see much innovation on turn-based combat. And so it's it's actually kind of cool to see a game add another layer onto something that was so... Um, I don't want to use the word classic, but so ubiquitous, I guess, throughout the industry. Um, and it's kind of a risky thing to do, but it just works so well. Um, I don't think I had any dungeons that weren't particularly memorable. Um, there's, there's just a lot, a lot of solid things, I guess, that made, made the dungeons, I guess, enjoyable. They, for the fights, the fights were all overworld fights. And I, I think that was another thing that wasn't very, if like, it was extremely rare back in the nineties to have a game that did that. I'm pretty sure this might have been the first game I've ever played, you know, back in the 90s that actually had overworld fights instead of random encounters. Well, that in of itself is uh, extremely impressive, and I cannot go past the screen, so we're just going to stay here. Um, uh, again, off the top of my head, I don't think any Cardinal Sins were, uh, RPG Cardinal Sins were committed by this game. Um, it gave backup party members full experience. The experience ring did not give every party member full experience, but um, I, I think that's fine. Uh, you know, if you want to give it to one character, that's fine. I think the fact that the frog coins were rarer than I thought they were, um, I think they could have just made it more expensive and then give everybody more experience. Um, that would have been nice. Uh, for the sound, uh, the music, oh my goodness. There's there's a lot of good musical tracks in this game. A lot of them I forgot about. And I'm actually really, really happy with the music. Um, and a lot of the sound effects, too. There was a, a lot of really nice sound effects that um, you normally don't... Uh, I guess a lot of sound effects aren't really memorable, but... This game has uh, a, a good chunk of them. Um, Bow uh, like the noises Bowser makes um, is one of them. There's another one that I I kept like every time it happened, I would I would make the noise because it was so good. But I can't remember it right now. This is a problem of playing a game for seven hours <laughs> and beating it in two days total. Um, I like the graphics. Um, the graphics were actually um, different than than um, normal, uh, normal like pixel arty games, I guess, uh, which is actually kind of cool. Um, it it actually does feel like a Mario game in many respects, and I absolutely respect that. Um, it it doesn't detract from from what is typical, I guess, but it looks like a Mario game at the same time. And so they did a really good job with that. Um, I don't, I, I'm going to say that I don't think this game has very much replay value. Um, I think the only replay value that you're gonna get from it is uh, like the Easter eggs and things like that. But at the same time, you could just go look those up. We're in an era where all that stuff is filmed and categorized and things like that so you can look that stuff up uh favorite characters gino bowser um i like the the axum rangers those guys were pretty cool uh they were short-lived but they were cool um i think that's all of the characters that i liked uh, dislike, I don't think I, I, I can't think of a single thing that I dislike about this game. I think it's short. I beat this game in art, like, about 14 hours. 
Um, which is pretty short for an RPG. Uh, so that's really the only criticism I could possibly give is... Could have made it longer. Legend of the 57 stars. 51 stars. I don't know. <laughs> um, and if the developer is watching... Um, you're probably not watching this because this game came out in 1996. And, um... You know... Uh, the sequels to this game... Uh, turned into Paper Mario, uh, of which I have not played. So I'm not going to say if those are fantastic games, just good games, or just uh, okay games, or maybe they're, maybe they're yeah, maybe they're not even that. But I I know it's too late for this. But I really wish there was just a follow up to this game. I really wish there was a sequel to Super Mario RPG that was not Paper Mario. Um, I've been looking for a sequel to Super Mario RPG about as long as I've been looking for a sequel for Legend of Dragoon. Um, and I know it's not gonna happen, but it's, it's you know, it's it's that one of those things on my bucket list that's, you know, all the way at the bottom and you don't look at it very often. But every now and then, you're like, let me look at, you know, let me look, let me look at what's in my bucket here. And you, you know, start taking out things, and there, at the very, very last thing, you're like, oh yeah, Super Mario RPG. Where's the sequel to that? Never came. Yeah, but that's uh, that's gonna wrap up this thoughts on this game. Uh, fantastic game. Uh, still one of my favorites of all time. Uh, sadly, moved down the list a little bit, but. Still absolutely wonderful. Um, if it was longer, I I'd probably like it a lot more. Um, the humor in this game is just so good that I don't know. Maybe they couldn't keep up the humor for another 14 hours or something like that. Or maybe the Super Nintendo just couldn't handle another 14 hours or more time or something like that. Uh, but anyways, that's gonna wrap up the thoughts. I'm gonna get into some of the, the side questing stuff. Yeah. <laughs>